Alright, so I've learned that mere minutes ago, my YouTube channel hit 20,000 subscribers. Woo! Yay! Yeah, I'm really happy actually. <laughs> that's pretty big. That's that is really big. For, for an English speaking Go YouTube channel? Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's all thanks to you people who may or may not be watching this video right now. Actually, by the time this video posts, uh, I'll literally be more than 20,000 subscribers because let's be realistic, this isn't going to post for like two weeks. So, there's that. Yeah, I believe this channel is the biggest Go channel. I think we're still bigger than the AGA. I checked Dwyron last week, and even though I, cont I contend that Dwyron's videos are better, and he's a little stronger than I am, and he actually has real content rather than just make it up as he goes along, I now have more subscribers than him. So for him, I'm, for that, I'm sorry. You should go sub all subscribe to Dwyron. All right. So do that. Okay, uh, today we're going to do some more Joseki. Because last week we kind of ran out of time. Yeah. Last week we did this Joseki. So 4-4, four, four, low approach, and the one low space pincer. Uh, Joseki are like your friends. Do you guys know this? Like, do you guys all make friends with this Joseki last week? All I know is basically everybody at my level just runs the white stone until it like, disappears into the... Yeah, that's a terrible idea, usually. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens in every single one of my games. So what you need to do is go back in time and attend last week's lecture, or wait another week for that video to post. <laughs> Those are your two choices. I don't do that as white. Today, though, I want to I wanna go over the high pincer Josek. And if you recall from the low pincer Josek, you're going to see a lot of the same shapes. If you don't, that's okay. Well, review them anyway. Um, but really, uh, the thing I want to focus on mostly is actually just rote memorization and learning of these Joseki. Uh, often in the, we'll say, the American mindset of learning Go, uh, Americans really like heuristics. They don't like working very hard. They just want to know, like, you know, what the concept is and when they can apply it, and then they'll figure it out as they go along. You know, shoot from the hip, cowboy, right? That kind of style of learning. Uh, that's not usually the case in a lot of East Asian cultures when they're learning Go, right? It's much more common to do, uh, you know, first of all, work on problems, and then pattern learning, and practice, and practice, and practice of those rote patterns and problems. And so, it's nice and almost kind of refreshing to actually do, like, some non-more conceptual, just like, I won't say mindless, but, but certainly uh, just, just more rote style learning. So when we talk about high pincer joseki, first we'll do some more conceptual stuff. What are the options? One, two, and three. There. No. One space. One more. No. Two space. One. And this one. Three space. No, no. Not usually. Is that even a pincer? Yeah, you could debate if this is a pincer or not. <laughs> and the reason why it's debatable is that white can still make a nice two space basin here, right? So you're not really pincering it. It's you can apply no pressure to the base. It's really. comfortable, yeah. So not this one. So really we're talking about these three. And you can say even this one, this one's a very loose pincer, right? Because Y can still do this and get some sort of base-like shape. It's, little, it's very uncomfortable for Y. Black has the much better position here, but Y can still do this. Usually in this case, though, if Y wants a base, Y will only do one space. And not, not go and touch the stone. Uh, but anyway, these are the three we're going to be talking about. And I think I'm going to start with this one. Because it's a cool one. Uh, actually, the variations from this are actually not that numerous. I think this one's actually a pretty simple one. Um, there are a couple of variations I'm intentionally not going to show you. Uh, last time, I think we tried to do 20 variations of the low spa one space pincer Joseki, and that was a disaster. Uh, so then we cut it back to 10. I think tonight the goal is we're going to do six or seven variations of high spencer. So we're going to try to set our goals more reasonable today. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at maybe two variations of this one, uh, probably two variations of this one, maybe two variations of this one, and maybe someone gets a bonus variation max. Okay. So first question, why do you play this? Why would you ever play this? Yeah, you want to emphasize the center? 
Uh, you also, this move also emphasizes the top. You often play this when black has something over here. Uh, you know, often, um, you know, if we, let's, let's say we have a stone here, white comes here. You don't really want to play this with this. It starts to feel very over-concentrated, not very efficient. There's still invasion points, there's still weaknesses, and you haven't really applied very much pressure to this stone. So when we have something to gain, we have something to build, often it's more appropriate to apply some pressure and build while we're attacking. So we play this, or this, or this, and it's just a question of what you want to emphasize and who, you, who wants sente and what exact shape of the outside you want. So these moves all emphasize the outside. Uh, you know, this and this in particular. All right, I'll take that down for now, but we'll come back to putting that there. Uh, white, in this case, really has, we'll say, three choices. I'm not sure if I'm going to review all three. Um, but the first one is to go, is almost exactly similar to what we played before, is just to dodge to the corner. And we saw this in the low space, right? This is the exact same thing here. So no difference. Uh, however, usually, there, there is a slight difference here. Usually if we're doing a low space pincer, this, this move emphasizes this side. So it's more common for black to block this way, right? And this way, because black has already said, hey, I'm emphasizing this part, it's now more common for black to block this way. You can still block this way, but if we just play it out, this is still a Giuseppe. It's not quite uh, as good feeling for black. And the reason is because, see this stone? This stone's actually better here. <laughs> this stone, this, even though white can move this stone out, black can't really be hurt because black can always connect it to this stone. And this is here, this gets a little bit more dangerous. Like this connection is a little bit uh, more tenuous. White can do more things to mess around uh, with black shape, such as this. Um, so we don't really like this shape. So, but it's playable. If you play this, you're totally fine. Um, just know that black really should play another move here at some point, if black wants to consider this stone dead. So that wasn't a very, I guess we'll call that a variation. Here's variation one. We're gonna do one than six, damn it. Okay. <laughs> But not very common to block this way, okay? Because again, Black's already said, I'm emphasizing this, and if we block this way, we get not as good shape as if we just played time. That makes sense? Okay. So we block this way. White plays here. Black plays here. White has a couple of options. Um, I think for right now, we're going to just play this one. How are we gonna play that one? No, we should do, let's do that. Black can play here. White plays here. Black can play here. <laughs> really simple. The two <laughs> stick Joseki. Hmm? The two stick Joseki. The two stick Joseki. Yeah. This is this is like barely Joseki. <laughs> Not at all exciting. Usually white will ask for more. I'm not even sure we should call it a race. Uh, here. 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 How about this one? This is probably more common. What does black do? Anybody know? Say it again? F15. Like on and top? Uh, yeah, but I think we should play first. Push and expose the first. We're gonna do this yeah. first. And this, this sequence I'm going to show you is going to come up in several variations. So if you learn it for one, you're going to learn it for the other. You're going to cut on the inside. That's going to capture. That's going to cut here. Like this. And black has a choice. If black wants to fight, black can play here. And this fight really isn't that bad for white. Like white, white can be okay in this fight. Next move for white is here. Black has to play a move around here. And if white has any support over here or over here, uh, white will get to attack something. If black has support on both sides, maybe this is a bad fight for white. Uh, the other move, and perhaps more common, right? Again, what was the point of this move? Like, why did we play this? To emphasize, you know, the middle influence, yes. So, you know, running a white group into the middle may or may not be what we want to accomplish. So it's maybe slightly more common for black to hunt. Well, 
Everyone has to come back. We can take these apart. And then shape. Joseki. And some of you guys, you know, are just gonna like never want to play this. And that's fine. But this is a I'll say in this when white black does the one space high pin, so this is a fairly common result. Because what did black start out seeking? Influence, particularly on this side, right? Especially if we block this way, we're implying we have something over here. And that's what we ended up with. So hey, we got what we wanted. Even though locally, white is pretty, it looks, is pretty good. Like white is super solid, right? White's never gonna be able to kill, get killed. Uh, there are some weaknesses and tricks for white to get in here that are annoying. This side is not closed off either, so white can expand this way. Um, you know, basically, we don't see this that often because the shape for black isn't great unless black already had, it certainly has something in here they're interested in developing. Um, but, you know, we, again, we played this move because this is what we wanted, and so that's what we got. Even though the shape feels a little bit worse for black. Okay. Should we practice this pattern again? Here. 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 And again, white can just connect and just, you know, keep black. Keep Sentai, basically, is what white is doing if white makes this connection. But I'll assume you guys can play that on your own. From here, what do we do? Push. This keeps our options open, actually. If, I think if we push first. I think this push is good timing. Right, piece of stone. Choice. Order your choices. We can fight. If you have support, if black has the, all the support, fighting's good. If black doesn't have the support, and just wants what he initially wanted, on the top. Must take. And we'll take all these Ataris. And white doesn't have to, you, you'd think, oh, white doesn't have to connect here. Uh, so why would white play this move? Right, if, if, if black takes, white can just take back, yes? So why would white connect? Yeah, it leaves cuts. So if you connect, black still has to fix. It has to find a way to get shape. And there's still a cut. If we let black take, and we take back. Are there cuts? No, black shape's really strong. So we do that to leave defects. All right, good pattern. You're gonna have that memorized now? What pattern is that, the third pattern I showed you? This is supposed to be the first one. All right, same thing. We're gonna play this one. Let's say Y uh, sees what you're up to doesn't want you to build something big here. White's like, ah, I see what you're doing. You're trying to build a moyo here. You're trying to get all that central influence for yourself. What should white do? Jump out. Break it up. This is the most natural move. If you play this high pincer, this is probably what you're going to see most of the time. And the reason is because of the direction of play. You chose this move because you want to emphasize this. White sees that you chose this move because you want to emphasize this, so white counters that. Make sense? If either, either player decides that the other person screwed up or valued something incorrectly, then you get these other variations. Okay? Black. White jumped out, white broke up this area. And so now all white wants to do is not come under attack. Just like We'll stop here. So what did white get? White has a group. How many points is this group worth? Optimistically? Maybe six. What did black get? These two moves worth points. How many points is that worth? Sure, I'll call it ten. What is this? 
reducing whites group? Yeah, right now it's on a it's on an annoying place for whites. Because later on, black and is like slap this stone. It has a lot of options. Yeah. And so even though it's not doing anything right now, it really limits white's potential over here. Because normally if white had a wall going this way, it'd be like, oh yeah, white would put something big over here. Mm. But black already has a stone, it's very difficult to do that. So we have an influence stone and some points. This is traditionally considered bad for white. Okay? So this is one way how you can gain an advantage on your opponent, right? This Joseki is just worth more for black, right, than it is for white. So if both players agree that this is the most important part of the board, you kind of need to play it. <laughs> right? Like, ah, oh, we both agree. And then you play out this. And Slack goes, aha, because we both agreed this was most important, I made you play a bad Joseki. But White's not happy either because, hey, but I broke up the most important thing. So, you know, it's a trade. It, this doesn't assume that the feet time stone is there, right? So it doesn't inherently. But because we're playing this one space high pincer, we usually expect black to have something over here. Because again, if, if black didn't, black wouldn't have a really good reason to emphasize this. Unless you just wanted to do it for you know, the shits and the giggles. If you're just, if you're just yeah, actually, if, if you're playing a, maybe, maybe a game against the player and you just want to do something weird. Maybe because our teacher's making us practice high Or <laughs> that's the reason, the teacher's making you do it. Yeah, that's there. I somehow misclicked on the real board. Okay, is good pattern? Good. We're going to ask you to review all these later. <clears throat> White plays here. Black plays here. What is this stone doing? Good, why would you do that? A little bit more about the bottom. Uh, you mean this? Oh, this bottom. Uh, maybe. 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 That's probably if there's a ladder or something. Maybe there's a fight. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll buy it. I'll buy that. I'll say this is more common though when white has something over here. If white is strong over here, you don't want to go playing too close to white stones because you're gonna get counterattacked. So this is a little bit more of almost like a half reduction, half influence, half pincer stone. Like your this stone is. <clears throat> Seen uh, to be able to do lots of things, right? It applies pressure to this stone. It can reduce a moyo here. You can easily imagine, you know, maybe white has some sort of enclosure. And white approaches you here. You don't want to seed the whole bottom to white. And if you do this type of thing, white might fight you. Yeah. <laughs> How's this stone feeling? Very dead. Uh, not dead, dead, not dead, but you know, like, you're getting attacked. You're gonna have to run? You're going to have to run. So if you're going to have to run anyway, why not put your stone there? <laughs> all right, we can play the exact same pattern of stones, and all of a sudden this stone feels so much better. Because now it's your time to respond, you can lean on this, get some shape, get out, make a be even make an eye or two here. There's actually a much more flexible space for this stone to be than here. This is, this is like way too committed to doing something. You guys see the difference? Like just getting it out a little bit further and away from the white strength is very useful. So in these types of situations, we still want to emphasize this part of the board for whatever reason. You know, either we have something here or over here. We still want to you know, not give white this whole side. So we use this type of move to break it up. These are all good reasons to play this pincer. Historically, uh, when, when Gold player, Go players of several generations ago were, pl were playing a lot of 4-4, this was a very common move. This move was almost completely unheard of. Like most people, this was a fairly recent innovation. Uh, I mean, a few decades, but still fairly, you know, fairly recent in terms of like the thousand years of Go history. This move's been around for much longer. This was seen as the, the better, safer move. But a lot of the variations are pretty similar. So let's say, you know, Black's played this, not necessarily just to break this up, maybe this isn't even a thing, because Black wanted to emphasize the middle. What should White do? Yeah, white, again, black's like, this is important. White says, therefore, I should break it up. Here, you guess the next move? Jump in, corner. Try to make a base. Next move. There. 
Very similar, right? We just transpose these two stones from here to here. Now, how these two shapes play from here is actually quite different. Uh, there's a couple of key shape points that uh, make these different, just because this is one gap uh, bigger. And just to show you one of them, black and peep here, and then play here. That's cool. Right, and then black will be able to seal this in on the outside. This is not part of Joseki, I'm not showing you this. This is just, I'm just showing you after Joseki's over, you know, things that black can do to mess with white later on. All right, so in this Joseki though, how happy is white? Happier. White is happier? Why, is, why would you think white would be happier? Hmm? Oh, happier than this one. But it, it has less of a, like a less stable base. Well, with, with this bigger here, there's more Aji here. Yeah, so there's a trade-off. Like this is very too small, but this has a weakness. So it's kind of a wash. Who do you think this Joseki is better for? Black. Black. Again, white had to play the last move. Usually black will, if black doesn't have a stump top ready, the move like here is very nice. Look how many points white is threatening to take. And black already has it reduced. Look how many points black is threatening to take. This Draseki is good for black. Why does white play it then? Because we agreed the middle is important. Because both players agree this is what's most important. Okay, so they, they, that's why the shape ends up this way. Okay, good. Another one? All right, white does not agree that this is most important. Two choices for white. One, two, we're gonna focus on this one. I don't really wanna deal with this one. Okay, maybe we'll do a whole other class on this one. Okay, this one. What does black do? Which way? To the left. Left? I mean, like, above, like, to the left of the white, the left white, side. The white side. Yes. So it depends, right? If black, again, black played this, assuming black was interested in this. So if black was interested in this, this implies that black has something here, or in this neighborhood, right? If black has something in this neighborhood, black will block this way. If black screwed up, and again, was playing this for the shits and the giggles, <laughs> black will have to block this way. And I'm just going to show you the shape. This isn't really, this, I mean, it's just second, but it's never played because, again, we don't play this when we want to block this way. Unless you're a fan of all the shits and all the giggles. So, what's the problem here for black? The black stone is like way out of the way to do much. It's really weird, weirdly spaced. And it feels like we need to have move here. Now, if you were going to plan to add another move here anyway, obviously this is better than this. <laughs> but it's actually not as good as this. So if you were going to do this anyway, you might as well have it that far. Right? So it's, it's like this weird thing. It's like, it's like if you know you're going to block this direction, you don't want to do it one space because that looks dumb. It still looks kind of dumb. Oh, that looks better. So you might as well play that one. Okay, but anyway, ignore that because that this gets never played. I'm gonna go back to here. Again, black chose this move because black is interested where? Here. So if black's interested here, black blocks this way. White. Black. White. Guess what? Guess what? Push it. There we go! Hey, Joseki! Cut on the inside. This should look familiar. Whoops. Uh, what? No. <laughs> that was a really good result of black. I don't think you guys appreciate the angle I'm looking at this, this skill point. <laughs> Like this this go board actually here I can measure it from here. The 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 length of the board in my in my vision is th all the stones fit into this amount of space. <laughs> I get confused easily. Okay. Actually, uh, that big. There we go. From there to there. All, all the nineteen stones. Okay. Uh, question. 
Does black have a choice here? You don't put the same as pressure on the stones because they have a variation. Yeah. You can't play this here. This doesn't work very well. Really? Really? You kind of have to play here. And so here, here's a story. About seven or eight years ago, I played a game against Janice Kim. You know who Janice Kim is? No. Yeah, she's a book author. She's also a Korean professional who is also an American citizen or something. I'm not really sure of her status. Um, and so I, we, were, we were hanging out, and we were just playing Go Casually, and I decided, hee hee hee, let's fight. Let's fight with Janice Kim. <laughs> Forgetting that you're stoned. So many regrets. What first? So many regrets. So there's a big difference between this here and this here. So the first thing whites can do... Playing right between those two, too. Two. Yeah, there's, there's already a shape defect. You guys yeah. can see it happening. She's gonna, you know, you're going to extend here. Black has to make some sort of shape up here. If, if you take another move to defend this thing, this, I don't know even how you defend it. I, I don't know. It's ugly. This is ugly. <laughs> uh, you're, just, you're, just, you're just toast over here. Right, this is just not go. This is toast. So, yeah, because, because the shape is stupid, um, there's, no, there's no chance to fight. And if white has anything, I'm talking anything over here and over here, white will really like this fight. Uh, because once, you know, if, if this group sort of runs out, you know, maybe even just something very simple like this, this move, this move gets really painful. I guess you can. Yeah, there's just a defect. Actually, maybe you don't even run out first, maybe you ask first and then decide what shape you need to fight. Might be better. Anyway, what's the moral of the story? Don't do it. Play here. Again, why did you play this move? Because you want to emphasize this and maybe break this up. Okay? You do not want to get into a big fight here. Actually, if you played this move to break up this side, then white has, you know, a strong group over here, and you want to fight, How does this look for black? Painful. You screwed up at go, go play chess. <laughs> Alright, this is no good. You can't fight both sides. One weak group, two weak groups. Bad position, bad choice. So, we play here. White. And <clears throat> At this point, there are a couple of more complicated, slight nuanced variations. I'm not going to show them to you. You're just going to learn this move. Done. The end. Nothing else. OK, so what did black get? Got, again, black wanted this side for some reason, so that looks really nice. And if white had a position over here and you wanted to break it up, how well was that? How well were we successful? successful? Like really successful, right? Like this group is just contained; it can't build anything big here. It has to work really hard to fight. Is cool? Jeez. Right. Okay. Here. Here. Oh, why you play this? Because if we learned it in class? No, uh, wrong answer. <laughs> if white jumps in the center, you can walk off in a direction and get better shape. Or, sorry, if white jumps into 3-3. Three, three, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a better option to block below. Yeah, now, walking this way is really nice. Yeah. We said, look, look, this is, you know, we, we said, look, I'm now making this bottom or something large. If you just dodge to the corner, I want to build something big. You have big dreams. 
And so you're happy as black. Like, yeah, that's, that's your plan. When white jumps in the corner, black's like, yeah, my dreams are becoming fulfilled. That's cool. What if white does this? Good. Now here's the problem. How many points are these moves getting for white? Zero. Like bagel. How many points are you getting for black? Just, just some. It's just pay by the hour, man. It's just get as many as you want. How does this stone feel? It's further away. If white can get a bunch of strength here, right? White can, white can pay you some points to get a bunch of strength here. Yeah, it's gonna be, white, white can't necessarily just slam that, sh that stone into the wall like it could before. Exactly, this stone is super safe. Man, it's super safe, but safer than we've ever seen before. And so when a stone was here, or even here, or even here, white could put pressure on this stone. Now that it's even further away from this wall, this is, this is like unplayable for white. White has too hard of a time getting pressure. So white can't pay you a bunch of money to get an attack. So what I'm trying to say is that white can't afford to jump out here. And if you realize, if you like understand this, like you just had like some sort of like nirvana, you know, moment of clarity, right? Like so you, are, you, are you trying to force white to make a small base there then? He can't go to the corner, he can't jump out. Well, he, well the thing is, he he's, he's, he's going to go to the corner. Okay. The, like, like, this is the move. But it's just better? It's, it's if, if, white, if White better. didn't want to go to the corner, why would make a base here? And why would still be sad? It would be like, very sad. It'd still be sad, because it's too small. So, what, so, you know, I don't know, 80% of the time plus, White is still going to the corner here. The other times he's not, whoops, he's doing this. And trying to get some, a little bit more or something else. White goes to the corner. So which side should you block? Black. Um, the bottom between the center. Almost this. Almost always this way. Because you have a stone here now. <laughs> you have big dreams. And again, this one should feel very familiar if you were here last week. What does black do now? All right, now, now, hold on. This is a move. That's a good move, it's solid. This is, this is like saying, you know, I have big dreams, but they're reasonable. Like, I want to grow up to be an accountant. That's a big dream, but it's reasonable. All right? You could have bigger dreams. be an astronaut. I was gonna go in a different direction. I was gonna say, you know, you, uh, you, you want to play bass for the Beatles. <laughs> That's a really big dream. Thank you. <laughs> big dreams, people, big dreams. Especially since someone forgot to tell you the Beatles, you know, aren't really playing anymore for a variety of reasons. Yeah, this is you want to play in the Beatles? This is you want to play in the Beatles cover band. All right. Well, this is, this is, this is like a thing. You, if you have big dreams, right, and then you can hopefully already have something here and go take another big move. All right? Maybe you already had this here. Maybe this is, you already had all this in place. This is why your dreams are so big. You're like, look, look, look. Ah, I've got this corner, white approaches me. I'm gonna pincer here. Such great dreams. Isn't that awesome? Now the reason, one of the reasons why you keep playing this, not just because you have big dreams, is you're also trying to, to limit this, the, the ambitions of this stone, like indirectly. And you know, like, like I have a kid now, like he's a toddler, I do this sort of thing all the time, right? Where you, you encourage your toddler to make the right choice through all these subconscious and conscious means, you know, to try to alter their behavior. And so that's what we're doing, right? We're just saying, look, there's not, you're trapped, there's, not, there's nowhere for you to go, there's nothing interesting to do, you have to sit down and read your book, okay? And I do that by taking everything else interesting away in the room. 
right? There's no, there's no screens, there's no phones, no other people. You sit and you read your book. You guys, none of you have kids, none of you are relating to this right now. All right. And the class universally shook their head for no, for the record. <laughs> I have a cat. <laughs> Fine, okay. All right, so you have a big dream. Isn't that an awesome dream? Yes? Good. All right, let's review those main patterns of those, I don't know how many we did. I think it's really, it's really like five, five patterns. We'll say five base patterns. And see if you can play out the rest of the pattern before I do. So this is like a race. So why do you play this move? Center. Sure, center. Why he doesn't want you to have the center? Yay. Oh yeah, I should show you other patterns. Here's this one. This is a pattern. I didn't teach you this. Other variation, good for black. If you can make this exchange. Sometimes your opponent doesn't let you have this exchange. But you didn't, you didn't do that. No, no, give me a symbol. I promise. I promise. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, you guys all got this one? One space. <laughs> I'm gonna call this officially not a thing. Something has gone wrong with your plan if you play this. We can do this, I'm gonna skip it though because it's kind of dumb. Play the reasonable one. Nice peaceful one. Yeah. Anyone beat me to it? Yeah? Did you do it? Similar. Similar? Similar talk. I was, I was so, that's wrong. Yeah, that looks like it. I think so. Yeah, but that's like the 20 cube beating me on the, on the Joseki. Mm. That's great. We just did it. <laughs> Tomorrow I won't. <laughs> Yeah, come back tomorrow and then we'll, yeah. All right. Let's do two space. What? What? Want to beat me to the end? You got it, dude? Not for you, but close. Okay. I'd do it without looking. Do it without looking, just blind go it. Yeah. Alright, good. And you're not looking at what you do. Two space, into the corner we go. Again, I'm gonna declare this not a thing. This is weird. You're like you're 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 mixing directions. You're putting ingredients together that shouldn't go together, like pudding and cauliflower. Here. Good. Almost there. I want to know if G seventeen works. G oh for black or for black now? Black. Yeah. Instead of the black, instead of G. Oh. We're not going to talk about it. Okay. We're, going to, we're going to continue our review without getting distracted. Good. All right. Final. Big dreams. What do we do? Corner. Block. Go for really big dreams. You're going to become the president of the United States. There you go. 
you want to keep playing, you can even continue. And say, so, you know what, this is big enough. Let's now start to bring it home and close it. All right, so those are your five basic patterns, right? And we, did, we showed you a couple of variations and some, some altercations that can exist. Uh, like two space high, you know how, or, sorry, the one space high where black can start a fight. Um, there's lots of other patterns. Uh, however, you know, you'll find that um, I think, and, I, and I, this is just purely speculative, you know, since we're in the age of like AlphaGo, a lot of these patterns are going extinct. Because Al we don't see AlphaGo playing them, pro players are avoiding them. And so I don't really want to try to surmise or guess um, what, go, what these patterns will look like in five years. You know, they might all be obsolete. Um, but for right now, certainly you should, you should have the basic pattern under your belt. At least have the basic expectation of what should be going on.